So today when I go over the offer, um, I want to, I've put together a, a document for you to go through and answer everything uh, that'll, that'll make you think about your offer. And I'm going to show you how to craft your offer in a way that's going to make sense as far as um, how you're going to get the most amount of results for your customers while delivering something that doesn't require all your time. See, we want to get away from having to um, do this one-on-one -on -one service base where I'm going to charge you for one hour of work. I don't care if you're even charging for $200 an hour. You, you've got to spend, the more you charge, the more time you're going to put into marketing. And if you're putting half your time in marketing, that means you've got a thousand hours a year, which means even at a hundred dollars, you're only making a hundred grand a year, $200, you're making 200 grand a year. It doesn't matter. You're limited. And the more you raise that price, the more marketing it's going to take for you to sell that at that price. So we want to completely disconnect from that. We want to create an offer where uh, the same things that we're going to tell to every person that comes along, we want to package those together into a system and do a video, provide the resources for them to be able to go and uh, deliver that to themselves so that when you're dealing with them one on one, you'll be able to say, you know what, uh, video four or lesson four, module five, whatever, uh, and send them to the video that they need to go watch where you've already discussed that you've already created the system for that, for them to walk through and get the results that they want to shoot for. So there's a lot of different ways that we want to go about this. We certainly don't want to create a course. We want to stray away from creating a course. Now, even though we're going to create a system and create training videos for that, we don't want to create a course. There's, there's very different things. When we create, if we were to create a course, you're going to end up in a situation where you're only going to be able to sell that for a thousand or two thousand dollars. That's great for scale. If you've got something that you can go sell to the masses, then a course is fine. But your pricing is going to be really restricted. If you go to Udemy.com, it's full of courses, and the most expensive courses are coming from. Uh, influencers such as Neil Patel, which has been around for 20 years promoting his marketing stuff. And he's selling his courses for $200. He's like this icon and has created a massive following and he's only able to sell it for $200. I've seen courses on there that I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about whatever. And it's 20 bucks. That's what people expect when you say course, they're like, Oh, hundred dollars is a lot, man. So stay away from that. That's if you can get quantity and get millions of people to sign up and you have the marketing budget to go spend on that much traffic to drive them to your course, then that's fine. So stay away from that. That's not what we want to create here. We want to create something that is a program that you're introducing people to. It's a lifestyle. It's a mastermind. It's a community that you're bringing people into. Um, you're, it's not just going to be you delivering this. You're going to have elements that you're going to allow people to help each other. That's the mastermind. That's the community element behind this. You might even raise some people up to be coaches and that sort of thing. But ultimately, uh, what you want to start with is that if you were doing a completely done for you service where somebody's going to hire you and you're going to go build their car, they're, you're going to go build their website, you're going to go build something for them, uh, or you're even going to sit there one-on-one -on -one and, and help them along with it, that's really a done for you. You're requiring, I'm uh, charging you for my hours delivering. And so we want to stray away from the done for you, and we want to stray away from the do-it-yourself course. We want to do this middle where we can disconnect from the hourly and we can get the, the high prices uh, instead of charging the low ticket stuff that the course would. So it's this beautiful meet in the middle of, I'm going to work with you. I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to work with you to get the results that you're looking for. Yes, I have course elements to that, but this is not a course. And don't ever call it that. This is a system. Remember, people in businesses by systems and solutions. That's what you're creating here. You're creating a system and you're providing the training through the form of videos to teach them the system in order to go implement that. Your one-on-one -on -one is going to help them overcome the minor, minor hurdles and obstacles and mindset and, and mental problems 
that they are going to get them stuck along the way in order for them to be able to use that system and those training elements that you've provided to get the results that they need. You're also acting as an accountability mentor so that when they get stuck along this process or if they're not making progress, you pull them in and push them along to get them the results because your ability to charge your prices is based upon whether or not the individuals in your program are getting those results or not. So let me share my screen with you. Okay. So I mentioned that you want to um, create this middle system of the service. Basically, what you're looking to do is create a system out of the service that you've been providing and in order to productize that service that you've been offering to everybody. So you have somewhat of a system that you are already implementing and creating in your own mind in order to deliver your service again and again. So what you need to start out by doing is laying out that system to try and figure out what it what kind of patterns have you been naturally doing in order to get your repeatable results. So this document here is the crafting your offer document. I'm going to go through it in this video. You'll get the link to it below. Bring over your target audience information from the emotional workbook that we did together and, uh, and list it here. You're going to want to keep your eyes on this so that you know who you're creating this for. You might have listed out a lot of information in the last document. So make sure you get clear on that and post it here in this document. Uh, you, could, you might create um, a couple of these documents. So go ahead and make a copy of this one here. Uh, make sure you label it for whatever offer you're shooting for because you might be adjusting this over time based on what your customers want. So after you've pulled in your target audience here, you're going to then identify what is the ultimate desire, the one big desire that your audience is after. You need to really nail this down. You can have additional benefits that are going to come from that desire, but you really want to pick that one clear desire. You don't want to say, make more money. That's not the kind of desire that you want to shoot for. This needs to be a personal desire, even if you're working with a company, even if you're working with an individual, maybe the, the VP of the company you're working with wants to get a promotion. Yeah, they can even get promotions when they're, when they're VP. That's what you're going to apply to is their emotional stake in the results that you're going to get them. That's what the ultimate desire is. And as I mentioned before, most people fall into about four categories of desire, whether it's freedom of time, freedom of money, freedom of work and purpose in life, and freedom to uh, travel or dis to dislocate from being stuck somewhere and having to do what somebody wants them to do. So this is the end result that customers are wanting to achieve. In order to create your course, you need to know the starting point of where they are now. So when you're creating your course, you've got this in desire, which is here. And you've got the starting point, which is here. So in order to create an effective course, you're going to need to connect these two dots. It's that simple. You do not want to fill your program with all of these offshoot information that are not necessary for getting to the desire, but you feel that it's effective for them to be able to know this information. So stray away from that. You really just need to connect these two dots here. That is your goal. And the better job you do at connecting these two dots with a very clear line the better that your program is going to be. So take your time when you're going through this document, this offer crafting document, make sure that you, out, you work on this outline in a very clear way so that you, are, uh, you know exactly what you need to do in order to get them from point A to point B. It's literally that simple. But the outline that you're going to craft is going to be very important because better results that you're going to achieve for the individual is going to be based on 
how well you're able to get them from point A to B. Typically, we don't want to deliver this in a fraction of a time. So we don't want that to say, hey, here's, here's the goal. Here's exactly how you get to be. Boom. There's the golden star. And it only took you 15 minutes to deliver. You want to be able to add enough information into your system in order to guarantee their success in getting to be, but you don't want to add too much information. So how we do this is that we get very clear on the end goal. This is why we don't apply to uh, a lot of different niches. We don't want to get broad. We don't want to get generalized or vague in what the end desire is that we're uh, shooting for with all of our individuals. So get very clear on your desire. You also don't want them coming in from different angles because it might not apply to them. So you want to get very clear on the starting point and again, get very clear on the steps that they need to take in order to get from point A to point B. That's what this document is about, getting very clear on this entire process and this outline. We're not going to worry about creating anything in our course just yet. You want to take some time to work individuals through your system to see if you've got any uh, failing points in it, to see if you need to work on uh, adjusting it or changing it or answering any questions that the individuals might have. You certainly don't want to jump to group coaching right off the bat, and uh, you don't want to scale your group coaching if you haven't done one-on-one uh, -on -one or small group coaching yet. So you're going to you're gonna go through this progression where you're going to work with individuals one-on-one -on -one as you create the system to get them the results. Then you might start out with a, um, a small group, a couple of small groups, uh, or do it just for one company and a couple individuals in that company before you get to a point where you're doing automated group coaching with an automated uh, training system. So it's a slow progression. Remember that. All right. So in order to create our course, we know where they're getting in point B. We know where they're starting in point A, and we have a very clear outline to get them between those two points. That outline is going to consist of pillars that they're going to have to accomplish along the way, almost like milestones, pieces of your system that they're going to need to become very experienced in, in order to get to be. Now, what you need to be careful about is a lot of people, when they deliver their course, they have a lot of experience. It's the curse of 10 years in a day, as they call it. So what ends up happening is that you've gone through all this time and you have learned things where you may have learned this block and then this block and then this block, and you were missing gaps in the middle of that information. That's why you weren't effective. And then you came back around and said, oh, that's why I needed to know this. And that's why I needed to know this. And that's why I needed to know this so that I could achieve my end goal. And so over time, you filled in all of the gaps of your course. It would be wrong for you to try to teach that information all together at once to any individuals that were coming into your process. The reason that it would be wrong is because your customers feel like they need to solve this right now. They feel that they need to solve this right now and this right now. And they can't even begin to understand the next layer until they've struggled with the problems of the first layer. That is the curse of 10 years in a day. So you do not want to teach your uh, clients how to go through your system in a linear fashion. You really want to teach this in a layered fashion. So you want to teach one and then two. And you teach those in a way that you teach this first and explain Maybe this is module one. You say, okay, this is what you're going to do first. And then you're going to realize that you have a problem. That's why you need to do this now. You're then going to want to do this. You're going to realize you have a problem. That's why you're going to need to do this now. So you teach it in a very different fashion uh, than what you're going to want to lay it out. Okay, so when we're creating our course, we have these very clear pillars modules, steps, lessons, whatever you want to call it, 
four or five is a good number in order to get them from their starting point to their accomplished desire. Another secret to creating a really good course is by going one step past this desire and giving a little bonus. This bonus is not uh, something that you just tack on in a click funnels fashion where you're trying to add a bunch of value into your course and solve this problem and solve that problem and solve all of these different things. That's not what you want to do. So take that information that click funnels gave you and get rid of it for now. That does not apply here. You want to get very clear on the one desire, the one problem that you solve. So that when you're speaking with individuals, you can say, yes, I solved that problem. Now, individuals might come to you at different steps in the process. So don't always worry about coming out and saying, hey, this is the problem I solved because it's not. You solve this problem. You help them get to this desire and they may come to you with the module three saying, hey, I don't know how to do this. That's fine. Because I'm going to, that's why you need to get very clear on the one ending problem, the one ending desire, the one major problem that they're struggling with, so that when they come to you with problems on the different modules, you know how to properly sell them when you finally get them on the phone. So no matter where they drop into your program, you will be able to get them to the end desire. Not only will you be able to get to them to the end desire, but what gets them excited is that after they've achieved that desire, they're already going to be thinking steps ahead and saying, you know what, once I achieve that, now I'm going to have this problem. And that's why you add that sixth module, that fifth or sixth module, whatever's the additional one to say, I'm not only going to get you here, but I'm going to show you how to do this as well. Maybe you're securing it, making it reliable. Maybe you're, uh, you're, you're just taking their desire one step further to get them those extra results. Let's go back to the offer crafting point uh, document. So you know that you need to get very clear on your desire and your starting point. The next things that you're gonna do is that you're gonna lay out the, the four to six modules or key milestones. Uh, I like to also refer to these as dominoes. Uh, so lay out the direct steps to, for them to accomplish the desire and overcome the big problems that they're having. Using the first domino being, what is the major big thing that you need to overcome, that everybody needs to overcome in order to move towards their desire? Because they're going to want to achieve that first. Then you go about saying, okay, number one, once you've accomplished that, then you're going to need to do number two and number three and number four, and now you've achieved your desire. Do not extend these past seven. You, you don't want to create this massively complex, well, we're going to do all these things. Da, 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 da. When you get on your sales calls, you're only going to have the opportunity to explain three items. So the way that I do it, is by picking a um, starting point of where the individual is, where they're dropping into this process. And I say, okay, you're dropping in here. You have this problem here. But in order for us to accomplish that and accomplish this, we're going to need to start back at number one. So that's how we're going to do this process. And I'll skip over two and five, and, and then I'll just round all those up. And I'll say at the end of the day, you're going to have this accomplished desire because that's really what you're looking for, right? And of course, you get the buy-in. Okay, so don't create this long, drawn-out process. The big domino. Now, I did say that I like to refer to these steps as domino, but the big domino is this point in somebody's mind where they, where they say, um, I'm not interested in your course. And then you knock over this big domino for them and they say, oh my God, your course is exactly the only thing that applies to me. I absolutely need it. So in order to knock over that big domino and make it so that your course is urgent and it is the one compelling offer that they need to take right now, they cannot miss out on this opportunity. Here's how we do that. If I can make my audience with this problem believe that the only way to get their desired result is through, through 
a solution my method provides for overcoming this major problem. And the only way to do that is through my product, my program, then all objections become irrelevant and they must invest with you. So if you lay this out and you basically say, hey, my audience uh, with a problem that the only way to have their best life now is by overcoming their emotional baggage or is through accomplishing a focused destiny. And the only way to do that is through my warrior program. Then what's going to happen in their mind is saying, I've got to get to that desired solution. And the only way that's possible is by jumping on this opportunity that is right in front of me right now. And that is this program. And so now it comes down to a price. And it will always come back down to a price. So when you know you get to uh, describing your program and talking to individuals and their next question is, well, how much does it cost? If you're pricing this appropriately, you will end up with everybody coming down to that saying, well, I can't afford that. Well, that's too much. Well, I don't, I can't, can't overcome that price. If you get to that point, then you've overcome every other objection. They know it's going to work. They know it's going to work for them. They're very clear on what you're going to achieve for them and the vehicle that's going to get them there. And the only question is, the last objection in your, their mind is, do I have the resources to make this happen? And that's always the last objection. So you need to learn how to create that urgency and use those situations uh, in order to uh, explain why they cannot not afford to do this. So you need to shift the value from, I don't have the money to shifting it to, I can't afford not to do this. And so we'll go through that. And that's really what crafting this offer is all about. Okay, the four to five necessary steps. Now remember, this is different. What are the direct steps? So this right here, what you're doing is, is you're going through and saying, Here's how I would do it. I'm going to bam, 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 and I'm just lay it out. So this is more of a brainstorming process right here. And when you get to the necessary steps, this is, let's go ahead and boil it down. This is where we begin outlining our program outline, because that's what you want to do at the end of the day. You want to have this nice outline where you are very clear on what it is that you're going to be able to accomplish for your individuals throughout the process. This is not necessarily something you're going to share at all ever what's surprising is that you don't need to share very many details or features about your program at all in order to get the sale the only thing that you need to focus on is that you are here my program is going to get you to be and you're going to you're struggling with these problems and that's exactly what my program is designed to overcome so you see, I didn't go through outlining all the features that my program offers. And if you were on a call with me, I probably didn't tell you about any of the real features that we were going to dig into. I just expressed the problems that you're dealing with and how we're going to overcome those problems by touching on these points. And so really, you don't need to worry about coming to a coined or an absolute course this is it bam this is what i'm going to do you're just going to lay out this general outline for your program and that may change over time a lot of things that get, people get stuck on is that they feel that they need to craft this perfect offer and and then they, so they craft it and they say oh nobody's interested i'm not getting a sale i need to change it so they craft something else or they run into, um, they think, oh, maybe I'm not hitting the right audience, so I completely need to change my niche and change my offer. And they, they get stuck in this launch loop where they craft something and they try it and then they launch it and it gets mediocre success. So then they want to start a new business or start a new idea or start something else. And then they get it set up and they launch it and they get mediocre success. And they, they're, or they get stuck they, against a wall. So they're, they're in this launch loop. So I'm going to show you how to overcome and get out of that. And one of the things that you, so when you're crafting this offer, if you're just super clear on that in desire, and yes, it is going to be more of a general desire, but you're going to focus on selling it to a very specific niche of people. 
and you're going to tailor it to that niche of people. So I don't want you to change your offer a lot. I certainly don't want you to change your pricing a lot. You may, uh, I'm going to show you how to grow your pricing over time so that you can test the market's uh, barrier to your pricing or the market resistance to that pricing so that you can maximize what you're charging while uh, and who you're charging it to without having to question it. Do I have the right pricing without having to question how do I sell this huge course when I don't have all this proven results or anything? Um, you don't have to worry about is this going to work for them or how do I prove it to them? We're going to overcome all of that. In order to do that, get clear on that in desire people want. Get clear on where they're starting from and now outline in these five necessary steps from where they're starting from to where you're going to get them. Um, after you've outlined those steps, we're going to go through and add a few bullet points under each of those steps that's going to say, okay, what do they need to know? What tools do they need? And what are they going to need to do in order to knock over this domino? In order for them to completely be capable in that step in order to build a good foundation and move on to step two. And so each, or I should say, what are they going to need to know, do, and what tools are they going to need to knock over module one's domino? to be proficient in it and build the foundation so that they can then get to module two. So those are gonna be the three or four sub items. So um, for my particular course, I said, okay, they're going to need to work on their messaging. That's number one. They're gonna to need to be able to communicate with individuals. In order to do that, they're gonna to need to get very clear on their ideal customer, and they're gonna to need to be able to get very clear on what they offer in order for them to craft the messaging that they need to get them to number two, which is the prospecting pipeline, and start bringing on customers. A lot of people think that they're good at sales, uh, but what they find is that they're good at sales when they have hot customers on the phone. When you start generating a ton of leads through the prospecting pipeline, you're going to realize real quick, you know very little about sales. So sales becomes my third domino, while the prospecting pipeline is my second domino. And then they're going to need to do A, B, and C in the prospecting pipeline to pack out their calendars. And now they're going to run into a problem with, I've got a ton of people on the phone. I'm very clear on my offer. I feel good about my marketing and what I'm doing on a daily basis, but I'm not making any sales. It's the wall everybody runs up against. And so we're going to work on in the sales, A, B, and C, in order for them to start landing clients on a regular basis. And now they run up to a time problem where they're like, I'm spending so much time creating content, so much time on the phone, qualifying individuals, and I'm finding that the individuals I'm qualifying aren't perfect for my, for my offer because that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for angels. And that's what you're going to be looking for here is you're looking for your angels and you're going to be getting a ton of leads through your pipeline that are both angels and demons. And so as you're finding those demons that are coming through your pipeline, now a demon is somebody that's going to require a lot of effort from you. They're not going to have the money. They're not going to be uh, they're not going to put in the effort that you need to get the to get them results, and they're going to require all of your time. So they're going to be wanting you to do everything. That's a demon. You want to stray away from those. Those are customers that require a lot of effort, and at the end of the day, they're not going to be satisfied. And so they're going to go leave a bad review. You're not going to be able to collect the money from them that you wanted to collect from them. That's a demon. So as you go through this prospect and you get those individuals on the phone, you need to know how to differentiate what's a demon from an angel. And both of those angels and demons are going to be in one niche. It doesn't matter what niche you pick, you're going to find both of those individuals. So you need to be able to cycle back, take what you've learned from uh, this prospect in the pi prospecting pipeline and in your sales pipeline or in the sales module, and you're going to come back and tweak your messaging so that you 
differentiate the angels from the demons. You might even adjust your offer to repel the demons and attract the angels. Go ahead and uh, map out the four or five or uh, necessary steps in order for them to achieve that desire, and then map out the sub bullet points in each module in order to get them to the next step. And remember, take it one step further in the modules that they have reached desire. Go one step further. This is how you create a really awesome program that gets people that are part of your program really excited about giving you amazing testimonials where they're like, I not only achieved this, I was able to go here as well. Okay. So after you've done that, you're then going to want to review the product type list um, that I've set up here. And in this product type list, these are different types of tangible elements that you can include in your offer in order to enhance its value. The last thing that you want to tell anybody is that, yeah, I'm giving you videos on how to do this and videos on how to do this and videos on how to do this and videos on how to do that. And they're just going to be like, oh my gosh, so I have to watch a ton of videos? That's what this is all about? You want to stray away from them. And you want to provide them with different types of elements that they can use to be successful. So the key here is that you want to give them a rainbow of different elements that they can use to be successful. You don't want to stick to just one type of thing when you're crafting your program. You don't want it just to be one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want it to just be video course. You don't want it just to be a workbook that you hand to them and they go through the process. You want to get very creative. You want to provide them with lots of different tools and uh, systems and, and information that they can use to be successful in your program. And so I've laid out all kinds of different elements that you can include in your program here in this document that you want to pull back in to your outline and say, this is where you get a phone call. This is where you get a mastermind with other individuals. This is where you get uh, a workbook. This is where you get a SaaS tool. This is where you get, where you do it yourself. And this is where I do it for you. This is what creates a full program that is not a course. You're not selling it for $20. This is what creates the value in your program where you're able to say, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, you're going to get this and this and this and this and this. And those are all the problems that you solve within your program between point A and point B in order for them to achieve their ultimate desire. So. Once you've done that, make sure you go through and outline what, it, what the done with you elements are and the done for you elements are. You're going to need to be, get very clear on what it is. So outline here what you're going to want to accomplish for your individuals in order um, for them to move along through this process. Now, back when I was 19 years old, I had just gotten out of high school. So I purchased a franchise of whatever you want to call it from FedEx. So I was a FedEx driver, but I owned my own truck. Not only did I own my own truck, I owned five trucks. So I had employees that I was managing through this process and, and I was exhausted uh, having to go out and relieve different employees while trying to hire on good guys and train good guys while I was trying to maintenance the trucks myself. This whole process I was trying, trying to manage, it, it cost me 15, 16 hours a day. I remember getting up at six so I could get to the, get out of the terminal by eight o'clock. And, uh, and then get done as quickly as I could while still trying to meet with people at six, seven, eight o'clock at night. Sometimes I didn't even get done delivering until nine o'clock at night where they had an absolute cutoff. You had to be done and back to the terminal by eight um, or what was it? Yeah, you had to be back to the terminal by 10 o'clock because you couldn't drive more than 14 hours. And I was overrunning that all the time. I was exhausted. So I said, I, I don't want to give this up. 
I want to throw away this business. I, I'm going to become a financial advisor. So I actually spoke with uh, some online university. Said, I absolutely, I'm dead. I want to do this. I'm absolutely dedicated to do this. I'm going to, I've got so much energy. I'm already not going to bed until three o'clock in the morning because I was also the editor of my own magazine. So I had all these things going and I'm like, I'm going to do this. And so they let me in into this into this college program and I didn't have the money to do it so they financed it to me and uh, I was going through this late at night uh, to plan to be a financial advisor and I got stuck on time value of money and I was just like oh my gosh I'm so burnt all day long thinking now I've got to use my mind and I'm trying to figure out all these different variables that come into play on time value of money and I think I just gave up out of sheer exhaustion, mental exhaustion. And I was just, all right, that's it. I'm stuck. And I got stuck and I quit and I just stopped answering their phone calls, stopped doing everything. And I just let it go. You don't want that to happen to, between you and your clientele. You don't want them to get stuck on something throughout your program where they just give up. You also don't want them to fade out. So you need to include this done with you thing where you're saying, look, I know you're going to get stuck at this point. I know you are because that's where I got stuck. That's where everybody gets stuck. And so this is how we're going to overcome that. So you need to include a lot of done with you elements in your program to make sure that everything is very streamlined for your individuals so that when they come up on these obstacles, you say, you know what? I'm going to take care of all the complexity of all of the technology, of all the setup, of all of the brain power. I'm going to do that for you and take the uh, mental decision-making process out of it for you. That's how you get success. That's why you don't want to jump to a um, group training right away with your program. You want to take the time and get the experience at least six to eight months of working with individuals one-on-one -on -one so you can build out this program for them and say, this is what you need to do collectively in order to get results. When you're thinking about the done with you, another way to ensure that you're going to be successful by putting your clients through this process, I did software development for 18 years. I had been doing it ever since I was 15. What I learned is that when outsourcing first became a popular thing, everybody was going and hiring individuals out of India and Pakistan and China and all these countries that even though they, they kind of spoke English, the, com the competition between hiring a developer here in the United States for $75 an hour compared to hiring one over there for what started out $5 an hour, now they're going to school and learning more. So they're charging, you know, a, a whopping $25 an hour. You had to compete with that. And so everybody ran to like do offshore. It's the best way you can build out whatever, whatever. And then what people ran into was uh, the, this communication breakdown. I remember that I told somebody, I need you to go program for me a programmatic caching system because I want my website to be really fast. So whenever anybody uh, goes to view my website. I don't want the program to have to make all these decisions. I just want it to have saved the old final decision and deliver it to the customer. Hopefully you can understand how simple that would be, right? Like instead of having the customer or the computer do all these calculations and then deliver a website, I just want the, the website to be done and almost like an image and just give it to the customer. I want it to be fast. And uh, so what the programmers ended up doing, so they got hung up on programmatic caching system. So they, they rewrote this system that was programming language that wrote its own programming language and cached its own programming language to then make all of these decisions about the website it should deliver. And I was like, what is going on here? I thought this was supposed to be fast. Now it's 10 times slower. And so it was a complete communication breakdown. And what I realized, if you want somebody else to go through your system in order to get results, completely take the decision-making process out of it. That's what makes a system to ensure that nobody will get stuck and that everybody will be able to go through the process and get results successfully 
at the end. Take the decision-making process out of it. In order to take the decision-making process out of it, you need to break it up into smaller items and say, just do this. Just do that. And when you're done with this and that, just go over there and do those items. That's what you can do to break up your system into small little nuggets, small little tasks that completely take the decision making out of the entire process. And at the end of the day, you will have that consulting program that just works again and again, no matter who you put through the process, because you don't have to rely on them making the decisions because they just go through your program. That's what this done with you is all about. If there's any decisions that need to be made, that's where you come in to help them make those decisions. That's what's going to create an awesome course. So go through, think about all of the, the areas where they're going to need to make decisions and then go back up into your outline and plug in. That's where I'm going to do this for you so that you don't get stuck. I'm going to do that decision for you. Okay, so you're going to want to go through and craft this complete outline. Take your time, go back through. Uh, if you've learned from other sources or you say, hey, I'm not strong in this area, maybe you need to bring somebody else into your program uh, to make it so that you can guarantee that every step of the process, they will go through very clean, very smooth, uh, without having to get stuck on any technical complicated uh, areas. So go ahead and craft your outline. Here's what my outline is more looking like. So I will lay out, hey, there's a video here. There's a workbook here, as you can see, workbook. Uh, so I'm outlining the different elements in there and the done with you's and the done for you's. So you're going to want to craft something uh, much like this. So when you're done with that, you're going to want to revise the major modules that those four or five to six initial pillars you're going to want to create intellectual property names from those because what we've learned in marketing is that nobody wants new nobody wants old they want new and improved <laughs> you might be wondering you can't have new and improved if it's new it's new if it's improved it's improved no people want new and improved together. There's this idea where there's this ocean and it's a blue ocean and blue ocean is all new. And then there's something else and it's this other ocean and it's a red ocean. And in this red ocean, it's all the same. I had this uh, really interesting conversation when I was younger where I, uh, my father is very good about going out and creating uh, new businesses. So he's in the all new category. And he was telling me, you need to go out and find something that's never been done before and create it. You need to invent something. He's always trying to, to create patents and all these things. And he's like, that's where, that's how you make the billions is by creating something nobody has ever created before. And uh, that, that's his mentality. And I had him on Skype and I'm chatting with him. At the same time, I was chatting with him on Skype about this business that I wanted to put together and where I should go in life. I was speaking with another individual. His name is Kevin. And uh, Kevin, if you ever watch this video, you're going to laugh. Um, I had Kevin on Skype at the same time. Kevin is a very successful hotelier. So he owns a resort and hotel up in Canada. He, you know, lots of rooms, lots of different excursions. So I've got Kevin on here and his mentality is, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to go create anything new at all, ever. That is not what you want to do. You actually want to go take something that is successful that is, and you want to go do a competitive analysis on all of your competitors and find out exactly what they're all doing exactly the same, all of the keys to success, 
eliminate all of the elements that they're all doing differently. Boil it down. These are the keys. These are what they're all doing the same. You want to take that and, and simply move it to a new location. And so he was saying, boil it down. Find out what is going on in this red ocean that everybody is doing the same and merge it. I have a purple one in here. Damn, I don't see purple. Okay, I'm going to go with orange. I know that blue and red do not make orange, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's the only color I have. You want to do this little mixture in between that is new and improved. Lots of scribbly on here. New and improved. My wife's uncle uh, created Sizzlers. If you're ever familiar with Sizzlers, it was like the most popular thing when we were kids. He simply found a restaurant that was very successful over in Australia, and he moved it to, to the United States and called it Sizzlers and popped up Sizzler all over the nation, and he vended, ended up selling it when he was older. And basically, he took this idea of finding something that was working very well. It was proven model. And he added his own little element, his only little uniqueness to it and created it brand new. And he also created it new by moving it to a location that had never experienced it before. So that's what you want to do in this process. You want to live in this purple ocean. And that's what we're going to do with these intellectual property names is that you are going to take something that is proven so that there's no chance for failure, and you're going to add an element of improvement to it to make it brand new. And that's what your intellectual property name is going to be. So you might take something by saying social media marketing, which is all the same. Everybody's a social media marketer. And you might change the name of it to being organic marketing. It's exactly the same. You might even change it to being relational marketing. You're taking something that is there. You're adding your element of improvement to it. And you're changing the name to something that doesn't exist so that you're making it brand new and with a little bit of curiosity to it. Because what's going to happen is that if you go out there and tell people, I'm a social media marketer. And you're, you're probably not for the purposes of this video, but if you go out there and tell them that, they're going to immediately associate everything they believe to be true, all the prevailing knowledge they believe to be true about social media marketing, and they're going to associate it with you. So what ends up happening is now you have to overcome all of that and teach them why you are not that. And they're also going to tell you, I don't need a social media marketer. And you're going to have to sell them on why you're different. So what we're doing is by changing the name and saying, hey, no, I'm a relational marketer. You may do the exact same thing as everybody else, but by changing the name and add, you're going to add a little bit of curiosity to it. And people are going to say, what the hell is that? That's when you tell them, you know, all that prevailing knowledge you thought to be true. Yeah, it fails here and creates this market gap. That's why I come in with my unique selling proposition and I solve it. That's why I'm a relational marketer, okay? So you want to change the name and create intellectual property names, not only for each of the modules throughout your process, but also for the primary name of your program to make it a little bit new, enter into a little bit of the blue ocean, while also having a lot of bit of the red ocean so that you're now in the purple ocean. You're now new. You're now new and improved. You're now something exactly the same, but a little bit different. I'll tell you another story about that. When they, there was this new song that came out and they actually had written um, some computer programming in order to determine what songs were going to be popular and what songs were going to be complete losses and how they did it is they realized that people like familiar tones. They hate completely new tones. 
And so the computer program said, you know what? This new song has a lot of the same tones and beat and cadence of all of these popular songs. So we know it's going to be super popular. And so that's what you need to do. You need to have a lot of those same tones and element and flavors and flair of your program, but it needs to be different. And that's where the intellectual property names come in. All right, moving on. Give your program a powerful name. If you can implement some type of ultimate desire of this is what you're going to get out of it, the program, great, then do that. Try to have it short and sweet by saying, bam, desire. That's what my program is. And that's where you're going to get, uh, you want to get to a point where you're not competing with anybody else. Go on Google, search for your program. Uh, if it exists in there, find something else uh, or change it in a way that you, could, you want to be able to trademark your program and be the only one that's out there promoting that same name. So be careful with that. Remember, the ultimate goal is going out and trademarking it. All right, so now you have this awesome program. It's new and improved, and it's going to take them from point A to point B, and it's going to get them the de desires and the results that they want. So how do you convince them that this is going to, that this is even possible? Because when you talk to them and say, oh, yeah, here's my program, and um, so I'll give you myself, for example, when I go out there and talk to people and say, I'm going to be able to get you to 250000 a year and you're going to have a reliable source of income coming into your business. You're going to have so many leads. You don't know what to do with them. The, uh, the response I always get is you're full of shit. So let me show you how I'm going to overcome this and get you to there. In the same way that back before they had airplanes, if I were to tell you I can get you from California to New York in, in six hours, you'd tell me I was full of shit. No train moves that fast. But if I say, oh, look, let me show you the plans for this airplane that I'm going to help you build that's going to get you there, then you're going to say, oh, I can see how that's possible. All right, I get it. I now believe you in the same way. When you tell people I'm going to get you to this desire, they don't have your experience. They don't know how it's possible to get there. You could tell them, look, I'm going to get you across this raging river in five seconds, five minutes, whatever, and you're not even going to get wet. And they're going to say, I don't know how the hell that's possible. And you're going to say, oh, come over here. Let me show you this bridge. And they're going to go, oh, my God, look, a bridge. I'm going to get, I can totally see how I'm going to walk across this river without getting wet. And I'm going to get over there in five minutes or five seconds or something. You need to show them the vehicle, the bridge, the path that is going to take them from point A to point B. What you don't want to do is give away the sauce that's going to say, this is the tool that you need to go create your own vehicle. You don't want to give away that tool. You just want to teach them the why and the what of the vehicle, and you can even help them create the vehicle, and the vehicle may uh, create another problem, and that is where your course comes in. That's where your program comes in, where you say, I'm going to help you build this airplane that's going to get you from California to New York in six hours. But you know what? Now you need fuel. You can fly it all around the world, all you want, all day long but you're always going to come back to me to get the fuel. And that's what you're doing with the vehicle being the opportunity. A lot of people have this wrong. They want to go out and create a free course. And what they do is they take their course that gets somebody from point A to point B and they boil it down and create this mini course. And they end up giving away the fuel or the way of going out and creating the fuel in that mini course and they completely lose the customers. They give away too, too much information. And those individuals take that little bit of success and end up going out and getting everything that they need. And they may not even go through your process, but they're going to find success in their own way. And you've completely lost any opportunity to create customers. What you want to do is give away or teach a low ticket mini course that helps them create the vehicle 
And that vehicle, once they have it, they now need your program to help them get the fuel in order to make that vehicle work for them. So what I do is help people craft their offer so that they can understand how easy it is for them to get to $250,000 a year. And they say, I see now all I need are leads and leads are the fuel of that vehicle. In the same way, you need to find out what is your vehicle? What is your opportunity that you're going to create? Because when it comes to your automation in your webinar, you're going to need to tell them and help them and say, this is your opportunity. It's the vehicle. There's a super successful guy by the name of Dan Henry. He has closed, I think, 10 million in business. And his webinars are very clear on saying, this is your opportunity. And so what he sells is teaching people how to create agencies. And so he does that by saying, look, every service provider in the world that's selling their services for high ticket needs to run Facebook ads. And they don't know how to do it because they're busy delivering to their clients their service. That's the opportunity for you. That's this vehicle. And so everybody's like, great, I can take this information and go be successful with it. And then they try and implement it and they're like, oh, hell, how do I get new clients? How do I get new clients? How do I get new customers? Oh, you know what? He actually sells that process. You go, go to him and he'll teach you how to get customers in order to run ads. Okay. So in the same way, in your webinar, when we get to that process, you're going to need to be very clear on what your vehicle and your opportunity is that people are going to want to know in order to get them from point A to point B. And then you create that opportunity, whether it's in your mini course, on your sales calls, or in your webinar, you create that opportunity so that they know you're not full of shit, so that they can see that end goal and that end desire, and they can see how it is that you're going to be able to take them from point A to point B. And then they will believe you. They will say, I get it. Now, you, what you've done is you say, said, great. No longer is your goal $60,000 a year. Now with this vehicle, look, what you've been doing, selling yourself hourly, you can't even get to $60,000 a year. But with this vehicle, you can easily get to half a million or a million dollars a year. And now what you've done is you've taken where they are and you've stretched this massive gap between their desire and between where they are now. And you've created this problem. That is the size of the Grand Canyon. And while the vehicle might be able to help them get there, they have no fuel to fuel that vehicle. And now you've created this massive problem on the webinar or on the telephone call where they're like, all I need is this. And that's how I solve it. So my big domino is saying, if I can help you understand that by achieving 250 or half a million dollars a year is possible, by fueling this offer, this high ticket offer where you can sell it and it takes you little time to sell it. And you know what? In order for you to sell that offer, all you need are a shit ton of leads for your program. And that's what my program offers. And now it's like, oh my God, there's this huge cavity that I have to fill. And the only way to do that is by this guy that's going to teach me how to create a ton of leads. I have to buy into it. So that's what you want to do on your calls. You want to create this vehicle that's going to help you stretch this massive gap between where they want to be and where they are, and they can see it happening. They just need your program to fuel that vehicle. Okay, I want you to head back over at this time to the emotional workbook, to your buyer's journey emotional workbook, and I want you to complete the offer questions. Remember, I laid out questions in there of what are the biggest hesitations? What are their hurdles? What are their objections? What are they going to mentally come back and challenge your claims with? And what are the reasons why they ultimately are going to invest in your program? So I want you to go back and answer those questions after you have crafted the complete outline of your course. This is going to allow, allow you to challenge your own program and determine in exactly what it is that you're going to be able to say and do in your program to overcome those objections. And that's what this flywheel is going to do for you.
It's going to allow you to go back uh, and to those objections and say, oh, people have objections. Here's how I solve them in my course. More people have objections. Here's how I solve them in my course. And so it's this flywheel of going out, getting on the sales calls, talking to people about your program. And when they come out with objections, you go back and slightly refine the messaging of how you deliver your course so that you solve all objections when you tell them what your course is. You solve all hesitations. You solve all hurdles that they may run into throughout your program to ensure that they completely understand it and how it applies to them and that they know they're going to get those desired results. And then when you're done with that on your own, I want you to go back and I want you to start interviewing prospects on your program. I want you to dive back into those groups that I've had you join. And I want you to begin speaking to people both in um, careful about your posts. I don't want you to have any public information out there that people can refer back to because in a week, you're going to start selling this at a high ticket. And I don't want anybody to be able to point back and say, hey, I remember when you were just creating this, right? So don't do any public post. Pull people aside one by one, talk to them over Messenger and say, hey, I saw you posted about this. Would you, would you have time? I'd love to interview you. I'm thinking about putting together a program that solves that problem. Can I ask you a few questions? Practice getting them on the phone. Don't do it over Messenger. Don't create an automated questionnaire that they go fill out. Get them on the phone. Practice getting them on the phone and out of the groups and then asking them the questions about this program. And then you can tell them at the end of your interview, by the way, when I do create this system, would you want me to reach back out, at, out to you and uh, give you the opportunity to, to invest in it and go through this program. They'll all tell you, sure, come back and let me know. So uh, make the friend connection with them. Uh, don't even ever worry about reaching back out to them. They will reach out in their own time when they begin seeing you as that leader.